What is up guys? It's your boy Rick Kakis and today we have the complete Root of Nightmares raid guide for dummies showcasing every single mechanic of every single encounter along with tips, tricks, loadout suggestions and more to help you overcome this brand new raid just added to Destiny 2 within the Lightfall expansion. Now guys if I can teach you an entire raid I can teach you a lot more things and I upload a ton of Destiny 2 content including builds, news, god rolls and more so make sure to hit that subscribe button additionally check the play bar because i have time stamped every single encounter so you can find exactly where you're stuck on and overcome it all right now let's get started here with the very first encounter now initially guys when you do load into this raid there is a decent amount of traveling and killing enemies uh, before you actually get to the first encounter you'll know you've gotten there when you see that rally flag circle but right next to that, we have another circle and our first mechanic. So you see what almost looks like a traveler figurine floating above a Zen garden circle and then surrounding it is like a glowing aura. Now, if you shoot the traveler figurine, henceforth referred to as the light ball from outside the aura, nothing is gonna happen. But if you're inside, then as you can see, you get a new buff, Field of Light. However, this will also start the encounter and then you're all gonna get a debuff, Sweeping Terror. So if Sweeping Terror gets to zero seconds, your entire team will wipe and you're gonna have to restart. So this entire encounter, you are under the clock. However, you can actually extend this timer. So around the map, there's going to be a Cavum of Nezerak. It's going to look like a Tormentor. However, I don't think you're able to blind it or strand suspend it, etc. Now, if you kill this guy, as you can see, time will be added to the Sweeping Terror clock. The buff won't go away, but you'll then get more time to accomplish your other objective. So what is your other objective? Well, if you go and shoot uh, the light orb and get that buff, then you may notice there's actually a beam of light coming out of that light orb pointing to another kind of zen circle. So you head over there and as you can see, you're actually able to essentially unlock another light orb in this pathway. And then that light orb is going to point in another direction. So you head in that direction, the light beam is pointing to unlock another light orb on a new location. Now there's a little bit of a complicated way you actually need to accomplish this. However, you may not see that these directional light beams point out of these orbs if the scions are up. So two different shielded scions, as you can see, will spawn around this arena and you need to go and take those down to unlock the ability to tell the direction in which to unlock these light orbs. So to accomplish this guys, you need to divide your team into two different tasks. What we did was have four people on ad clearing duty. These people are keeping on top of all of the cabal as well as taking down those Nezerak tormentors to extend the time. And also whenever they saw the scions spawning, they would go run into the shield, melee them or shoot them whatever to take those guys down. The remaining two people are on the light ball connection team. So let's talk about that. Now, what you need to do is actually get the buff and then you can actually go and activate only one extra light ball because as you can see, it will take away that field of light buff. So another important thing is that you don't want to get the buff at the same time. Right? So if two of those people both get the field of light buff, they run forward, one person activates it, the other person is trying to go to the you know next third one, it's gonna screw up. It's gonna say that the connection has been broken, they're not gonna be available to shoot. So here is the order in which you need to do this. And this is very important because it's gonna come up throughout the entire raid. You need to have one person standing outside of the aura and the other person inside. The person inside shoots the orb, gets the field of light buff, and then they go to the next orb location. They shoot it, they activate it, and then that person standing outside, they then go in and get the buff for themselves. And they essentially hopscotch. So they're gonna skip over that person on their new orb and go to the next orb in the chain where that new orb is pointing to. They're gonna activate that third one and then the person 
that activated the first new orb location, they need to go back to where there's a glowing aura, shoot inside to get a buff again, and they go to the next location in the chain. And then, you know, the other person out, the odd man out, heads back, gets the buff, and continues forward. So you're constantly like going and activating one of these orb locations, while your teammate is then getting buffed after you've done that and going to the next one. When he gets the next one, you get buffed and go get the next one and it keeps going like that. Uh, the one thing that may throw a wrench in this is that there's actually going to be changing locations of where you can acquire this buff. So it's not always going to be the very first starting orb location that's gonna have the glow. Eventually it will move to another location in the chain. So you have to be aware and look around where the glowing orb is. That's where you need to head to get your field of light to then go and activate the next orb in the chain. But once you guys do this and you just hopscotch through these different orbs, uh, then you're gonna activate all, uh, I think there's five or six in this first location and then the Sweeping Terror debuff will actually go away and you'll be able to kind of move up to the next set of these orbs. And you do the same thing all over again. You kind of set up, once the first new orb in the chain starts glowing, you're gonna get the debuff again and ad clearers keep ad clearing and the connectors keep connecting. Now, again, it, the, the complicated part about this mechanic is the whole like, you have to wait until your teammate gets the buff and goes to, and activates one until you can get a buff to go and activate the next one and then they have to wait for you to activate the next one before they can get the buff again. You really wanna avoid two people having the buff at the same time if they're both connectors, right? Now, importantly though, once you activate a new sphere, you actually don't need to stand in it. You're gonna see us doing that in the background gameplay because we were just learning the mechanics, but once you activate that new sphere, you see it like come up and it glows and you're good to go, you can dip. You can go right over to where the glowing location is and just wait nearby, ready to snatch that buff as soon as your teammate connector is done activating his orb. So you can accomplish this a lot faster if you're having trouble with timing. Now, as for a loadout suggestion for this encounter, Vault Arounds. Especially because of the absolutely free seasonal artifact perk, you can have Vault Arounds all the time with your void weapons, stuff like machine guns, ag clear like crazy, and Vault Arounds will pierce barrier champion shields, which you will also encounter within this encounter. However, guys, once you do make another bunch of connections, it's gonna move forward and then you make another bunch of connections. Then I think you make one more bunch of connections the whole while killing ads and that's about it. The encounter will end and then we move on to the second encounter. However, as you're making your way over, you can actually grab a secret chest. Now, first of all, you might need to kill these aspirant of Nezerax yellow bars along the way. Like there's one kind of here. Uh, there's a second one obviously uh, right here in this location and then a third one right here and then when you move up and you're almost ready to go uh, to this new location you're traveling on these uh, tendrils right here you see a bunch of doorways on the other side of this big wall well, you head into one of these doorways, as you can see this one uh, right here. There is a back passage connecting them. Then you're gonna have one more uh, Nezarek guy, a tormentor. You kill this guy, and then as you can see, it will unlock uh, this chest to spawn. So again, potentially you may need to kill uh, those other aspirants, uh, then this guy before you unlock this chest, but there it is. Now, moving on from there, you're gonna continue making your way kind of up until you hit uh, the second encounter. And this encounter flag is out in the middle of this kind of floating rock here. And you can see there's essentially two halves of this arena split up by this giant chasm. So on the right, you see the same thing you saw before. It's the light sphere. But then if you look over on the opposite side, the left side, there's actually a glowing darkness sphere. Now, if you go inside this aura and shoot the darkness orb, you get a different buff called Flux of Darkness. However, it operates mechanically identically uh, to the field of light that you are used to. So you need to split your team up into the two different sides. 
three people on the light spawning side, three people on the darkness spawning side. And importantly, you have to go across this chasm over and over again because that's how the connection is made. It zigzags once you activate the very first light one, for example, I need to immediately yeet over thanks to this man cannon and land on the other side and activate the next orb. So. Again, these man cannons are what you need to use. As you can see, you shoot uh, this certain darkness object and it launches you over. Keep in mind, uh, there's gonna be multiple as you go forward uh, throughout this zone. So there's like one on the left, one in the middle, and one on the right. So you're probably gonna need to change your location and change which man cannon you use to make sure that the journey is shorter because guys, you are down to like the wire here. You have to be, you know, pretty perfect in order often to come back, get the buff, jump all the way over, avoid and potentially kill adds, and then activate the next orb. So at a base level, that is what you're doing. It's pretty much identical to the first encounter with the teams, you know, getting the buff, going and hitting the next orb, then saying, all right, I got it. The next person grabs the buff hits the third orb, then the next person hopscotches back, gets the buff and gets the next orb and you keep doing that. The way the encounter works, remember, uh, and what we did is you start on the light side, one person is jumping back and forth constantly. The other person can just stay there because they're activating the other half that always spawn uh, on that side. However, while you're doing this, there's a couple more things going on. First and foremost, you have a debuff called Imminent Expulsion, and it's counting down. And it, it does exactly what it says. Once it reaches zero, a giant goop will push you off into the chasm and everyone will die. So you need to be accomplishing these links in the allotted amount of time. Also, guys, there's going to be, as you can see, enemies that have either light or darkness shields. And if you have neither of these buffs, they're immune. If you obviously have the non-matching one, they're still immune. You have to have the matching buff. So if you see a guy glowing white with a light shield, you have to have that field of light buff to take that guy down. So these teams of three and three, two people are focused on making connections the third guy is also kind of getting buffed in order to take these enemies down. However, keep in mind, the light shielded guys are only going to spawn on the side where the original like light orb starts and vice versa for the dark shielded guys. So you can also do it so that the person making the connections on the original side who isn't jumping across they're the ones taking down those shields because they have extra time. They just need to walk a little bit forward. They don't have to jump across uh, the chasm. And by the way, for these, well, first two encounters, there's no bosses. So stuff like a um, machine gun, add clearing weapons, those are gonna be phenomenal for this encounter and the previous encounter. However, guys, once both teams, the light team and the darkness team, have made all their connections, they've jumped across the chasm many times, all the orbs are complete, then it's actually gonna unlock a new man cannon that is on the furthest away side from where you started. As you can see, it's going to shoot you up into the second level. And then you do the exact same thing you just did. You start uh, on the original orb with the aura around it, you start making these connections, jumping back and forth across the chasm, and once you have connected all of these orbs, then you're gonna be shot up to a third level, and it's more of the same, just making these connections, dealing with the uh, shielded guys, all of that stuff. Guys, there you have it, that's the mechanics, and eventually you will complete this encounter. Now, once you do, it's actually gonna put you in this area here and you're gonna see those light and darkness orbs again. And actually to progress to the next jumping puzzle, you need to complete this puzzle and it's the same thing. So you're gonna have to divide into those same two teams. Uh, you're gonna start the darkness orb with one team, start the light orb with the other team and then just go from location to location activating these orbs uh, with the end point being this kind of middle floating object. Once that's done, then uh, the sphincter is gonna open up and you can go through here and continue to the next encounter. However, again, we have quite the jumping puzzle here. So this is a little bit of a different mechanic here and it only kind of comes up here where you need to pick up the light buff first because that is gonna let you pick up the darkness buff 
in this location. So if you go straight to the darkness buff and you stand inside, you shoot it, you can't actually get it. And that's because the light buffs are always glowing and the darkness buffs are not. Now importantly, these darkness buffs here are actually called like darkness refuge and you actually do take refuge from this giant pulse of darkness energy, as you can see, that will wipe your team. So you kind of need to time it right so that you have this uh, darkness refuge while that ginormous wave of darkness energy is going over you, because as you can see, if you have the buff while it goes over you, you will not take damage. So you just go forward through this location getting light buff, then dark buff, then light buff, then dark buff. If you're really fast, you can kind of keep it so that you constantly have both of these buffs, uh, but definitely it is a little bit tricky and I'm doing my best to show you guys the route you go in the background gameplay. There is gonna be enemies along uh, this as well. I think there's a secret chest here, but we didn't find it. And that is going to eventually lead uh, to this kind of big door here, guys. Now, importantly, you will need all six teammates here to open the door uh, and progress. So that does mean that if you do make it here, you need to run down to the nearest light orb and then run back to the dark one and then run to the light and dark and kind of like juggle back and forth until the rest of your team comes in here and you can actually progress. But then you're gonna progress into more of the same. As you can see, there's like this giant staircase causeway where you are just doing the same mechanic. You're getting light and then you're getting dark, uh, trying to keep up that uh, buff to avoid the wipes. You're gonna continue moving uh, forward here until eventually you climb all the way up uh, to this area here. And it's the same thing. You're gonna have to wait for the rest of your team uh, to get here before the door opens and you can continue. So juggle it until they do. And then finally, guys, when all six people are here, uh, the door is going to open and you're going to enter the third encounter. And once you do, you're presented with a planetarium in front of you and a boss in the back of the arena. What the heck are you doing here? Well, you're aligning the planets properly. So before you've actually started the encounter, you can see that two of these planets are not the same as the rest. One is glowing with light and the other is very clearly like the darkness planet. The light one is the left side, the darkness is the right side. Essentially, you need to put all of the light planets on the light left side and the dark planets on the dark right side. But how do you go about moving these planets? Well, very importantly, let's go over the layout of this arena because it matters quite a bit. So you're gonna have platforms off to the left and off to the right. So you have two triangular platforms to the left and two triangular platforms to the right. These triangular platforms have three planets each, one above each of the points of these triangular platforms. And this is important because once you get all of the planets on these triangular platforms correct, like if they're all three light, then as you can see, the middle kind of pillar here will like shoot out with either light or darkness and it will be kind of glowing above it saying, hey, you're done this platform, you've done a good job. So that's important to know. But again, how do you align these planets? Well, you're gonna have to kill ads off of the start. Now, importantly, you wanna look out for these yellow bar centurions because once you kill the one associated with your triangular platform, then you're gonna spawn the terrestrial lieutenant right on your platform. And so make sure you're not standing where he spawns because he will stomp you and probably kill you. Now, once you kill the terrestrial lieutenant, this big guy, whoever actually dealt the final blow will get a buff called Planetary Insight. And as you can see, it lets you look at the planets on your side. I can clearly see these planets that once looked like normal planets, they are now glowing either light or dark. So I'm I'm on the left light side, so I'm looking for the odd planet out. I'm looking for this darkness planet. So this is the one that doesn't belong here. So what I need to do is go to it, and as you can see, there's a little glowing orb underneath the planet, and you can activate it, and it's called planetary attunement. So the same thing is happening with my partner on the opposite side. So I'm partnering with Amateur here. He is 
killing the terrestrial lieutenant on his side, he's getting planetary insight and he can see the planets immediately around him, which one is the odd one out. But he's looking for the light one because he's on the dark side. So there's gonna be two darks and one light for him. So again, we've partnered up, right? The other two people on the bottom triangular platforms uh, have partnered up and then the last two people are on ad clearing duty. So you're gonna activate this planetary alignment and once you do, as you can see guys, you get planetary shift and it's actually gonna decay over time. So you need to accomplish this before the bar is all the way done. And essentially, we just switch a route. So again, me and Amateur have partnered up. We are gonna go and activate each other's planet. So you need to actually either look or call out specifically which planet you activated. I activated the darkness on mine, he activated his lightness one, so we need to go and activate the exact one that each other activated, and then, as you can see, the planets will switch positions. They will swap sides. So now, my side has all three light, his side has all three dark, and the same for the other two triangular platforms uh, below us. Then you have to go through the process of killing adds, killing those centurions, spawning the big uh, lieutenants, killing those guys, because that will give you planetary insight yet again. But you've already aligned the planets to the proper side. What are you supposed to do now? Well, now you're looking in the center of the arena. As you can see, there's three more planets that you weren't able to rotate previously that are in the center. So in this example here, we have two light up at the front and one dark at the back. I have switched, so I'm now at the darkness side and I'm just going to align any one of these three planets, it doesn't matter, with the darkness planet because you're switching the darkness planet from the middle onto the darkness side. You're switching darkness with darkness. You're not trying to mix up uh, darkness and light, right? And so two people from the light side align the top two light planets. So once I get the darkness one, that's the hard one. Like the odd one out is the one you wanna do first because then anyone on the other side can align the planets. You don't have to have planetary insight to actually do the planetary alignment mechanic. It's just obviously important because you can actually see which one you're supposed to do. So technically you could just guess and get it right, but I wouldn't recommend it. Then in the center of the arena, you're gonna see these planets kind of collide above your heads. If everything is matching light on light and dark on dark, you've aligned everything properly. And that means the damage phase is about to begin. Then the boss, as you can see, is actually going to shift his focus. Now, importantly, guys, he's going to get a random shield that might be light, it might be dark. Look at him and see if he's glowing white or orangey or whatever darkness is. And then you need to head to the platform that is associated with what he is glowing. So in this example, he's glowing white. We head over to the right side. That is the light platform and you DPS the crap out of him. Now we did find rocket launchers were very good. So one person using Galahorn, everyone else using Hothead or whatever the best DPS rocket launchers you have are. We also did have one person on Divinity in order to get the amount of debuffs you need. If you have more hunters and you have like three tethers, you can tether just once on each of the platforms instead of using Divinity potentially, but that's what we used for damage. Also, we had some Starfire Protocol Warlocks yeeting out fusion grenades like you wouldn't believe. But guys, after really not too long, he is going to shift his focus and then he's gonna be immune and get a different kind of shield. And it seems to always be the opposite, guys. So if he started with light, and in this example he did, he's always gonna become dark. And so you just head to the darkness one, DPS from there, then he shifts again, and he's back to light. So you go to the third and final plate and finish the damage phase here. After you're done and he's immune, you do the same thing you just did, align the planets on the correct sides, align the middle ones to enter into another damage phase. Now keep in mind guys, again, you do not have a lot of time on each of these plates. So it's really just a waiting game uh, to when he first changes his shields, you go to that first uh, plate and then you know whatever his shield is, you're headed to the opposite 
kind of plate next. So like plan your escape route because you need to be there as quickly as possible. Additionally guys, really make sure to not accidentally step over one of these plates or float over them because it can deactivate them apparently. We did have one where we went to the plate and it was immune the whole time because probably someone just stepped on it. So keep that in mind. However guys, once you've done enough damage to him, as you can see, he has a final stand mechanic. So in this case, it seems like all three of the plates start glowing orange and then you just need to burst him down as quickly as possible. You need to do as much damage as it takes to actually kill him or the team will wipe. So another big tip here guys, is that if you're running low on ammo and you're getting close to that final stand, it's probably a good idea to stop damaging this guy, back away, do another rotation to try to get ammo, like put on some special ammo finishers, um, the Aeons to try to get some heavy ammo, stuff like that. And then you can go back, do a proper damage phase, finish off the sliver of health before final stand and easily take him out in final stand. But then guys, moving on from there, we have yet another uh, puzzle here to open the sphincter where you are uh, doing the uh, darkness and light orbs. So just do that same thing again, open up here, and then you're going to make a pretty long journey here until eventually you are going to get to the actual boss fight, this arena here. And so we start the final encounter against the big bad final raid boss, Nezarak himself. So if you look around the arena, you're gonna see on the right side, you have a starting darkness orb. On the left side, you have a starting light orb. So you have to split your team into groups of three, but more realistically, it's two groups of two, like a darkness connector team and a light connector team. And then the other two people are mostly gonna be on ad clearing duty. So you just do the same mechanic you've done a bajillion times before at this point. So you run up, like I get the buff, I go to the next one, I say, okay, I got it. My teammate, in this case, my connector amateur, he gets the buff, he goes to the next one, I wait for him, I go to the next one, and you just hopscotch as usual. Keep in mind, guys, the order is gonna be random. Like, it's gonna go to the same first one, and it's gonna have the same ending point, but pretty much everything in between is pretty randomized, so just be aware of that. Keep your eyes peeled for the little floating orb where you're supposed to go. Now, connecting these wouldn't be so bad, but the entire time you have a ton of ads, so stuff like grenade launchers, volatile rounds, just to take care of them. Uh, if you have a divinity guy, he should be running machine gun in order to bust down these ads as quickly as possible. Uh, additionally, you are gonna have uh, the big lieutenant guys. Those are great because you can get heavy ammo finishers on those guys if you have Aeons on, which is probably useful, uh, but also, you're gonna be booped up into the air thanks to Nezarak. And that's because while you're trying to make these connections, guys, you're gonna get a debuff called Nezarak's Hatred. Now it's just gonna randomly happen to certain members of the team and it is going to essentially constantly like scion boop you into the air and it can be very, very annoying. However, you can counteract this because if you have the buff, you can actually shoot Nezarak in the chest and then he's going to aggro on just one person. So one person can kind of take the heat for everyone else so they can accomplish the connections and the one person can kind of take uh, the hatred for themselves and try to DPS Nezarak as well. Because once you do shoot Nezarak to have his attention focused on you, he's gonna drop down off of that elevated platform and then he's gonna actually have more weak spots to damage, like on the shoulder and so on. And at this point, you have two options because you can either just finish up the connections on each side fast enough. If you don't, he will wipe your team. So if you need more time, there's actually a mechanic involving his shoulder weak spots that will extend the duration before this wipe mechanic. So what you need to do is someone needs to shoot his shoulder weak spots, one of them, and you'll actually see a blast of energy that's released that will be either light or dark. So it'll kind of blast out with a glowing white blast or a like orange darkness blast. So if it is a white light blast, what you need to do is that means someone with the darkness buff needs to come over and shoot 
one of the white completed orbs. Not the white glowing orb where you'd get the buff, but like a further back completed one. And while you're doing that, your entire team needs to be on that node and all of you guys will get a shelter debuff, which will save you from that white mechanic. It's kind of similar to the previous jumping puzzle where you need to uh, get light first and then dark and then light and then dark. So if you see a darkness blast, the opposite is true. You need to get everyone to go to a darkness node and someone with the light buff shoots that darkness node and then gives a shelter buff to the entire team there. And guys, I'm gonna keep it real with you, we never did that, not once. In our completion, we just went fast. And honestly, especially when contest mode is over, it's really not gonna be hard to get those connections done fast, especially when you're used to where they're spawning and completely ignore this extension mechanic. Now with that all being said, once you've established the connection, you've gotten all of the darkness orbs on the right and gotten all of the light orbs on the left, then all of the places you've got those orbs are gonna shoot up pillars of light or darkness and Nezirak himself will take like a beam of energy as you can see and then he will become available to DPS. Now, as for where you wanna DPS from, as you can see, you can go to these elevated platforms and you can shoot him from here. He's gonna smack the ground and do all this stuff, but he can't really damage you. Especially if you're in a well, you're gonna take whatever lingering damage he throws at you easily. So we did start with our DPS phases on this really high elevated platform right here, but it was a little bit tricky at times. And if he becomes available to damage, like in the center of the map and you're way over off to one side, as you can see, it's not ideal. So we actually ended up actually getting the completion on this like middle platform right here. And this was a lot easier. Again, you're taking very minimal damage from Nezirak. Uh, they can't get up here and you just sit in a well and absolutely lay into this guy with rockets. Now, a tip here, rockets are definitely great for DPS, but I was running the Arbalist at first for a little bit extra, you know, DPS and ranged effectiveness. But oh my goodness, we got so much more damage when some of us start switching to fusion rifles, right? I put on the Null Composure with its high impact reserves and did a lot more damage because Nezirak is like right in front of you, right in fusion rifle distance. And those rapid fires, especially when you have a divinity bubble can do a lot of damage. Not to mention being void means it can trigger bricks from beyond the seasonal artifact mod uh, that gives you more heavy ammo. And that's very important. You do absolutely want to have someone on each of the sides uh, with the ability to make heavy ammo via the Aeon exotic gauntlets, right? Because if you are, especially in contest mode, uh, able to get this guy down, you're likely gonna be pretty much completely out of ammo. So you need to be able to go around and collect a few more bricks. And guys, yet again, this boss will have another final stand mechanic. So as you can see, we got him low. And once uh, you get to that point, he does become immune for a few seconds. So make sure to not shoot your rocket in that like one second of immune phase. Then he kind of teleports back down and you have the chance to damage him. You have to do enough damage uh, in a short amount of time or he will wipe your team. So the same thing applies. If you're, let's say on your second damage phase, you're getting him low, but you don't have a lot of ammo bricks around. You're running out of ammo. It's probably a good idea to stop, leave him at a sliver before that final stand mechanic, do a whole extra phase, try to get some ammo, and then you can actually finish him off. But guys, in any event, there you have it. The final chest is gonna be up on this elevated platform. Go ahead and pick it up, as well as interact with Nezirak's weapon to purchase an additional piece of guaranteed red border raid loot, at least the first time you do it on a character. So absolutely, guys, uh, get that done. Hope you enjoyed this video, found it informative, and if you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys wanna see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis that is linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, have a good day.